Okay, so we're ready for part three, the third thing that we can do with the ideal gas law, and that is we're going to have a discussion of what's called molar volume. Okay, so we're going to use molar volume in calculations. We're going to derive what molar volume is. Let's just think about what that word or those two words together mean. Molar volume means the volume of one mole. And we're going to do the volume of one mole at STP because this is a very common condition that we run gases in. Okay, it helps give us a common ground. So we have, um, we're going to derive the molar volume of a gas. So we want to use PV equals NRT to do this. And we want to solve for volume because we want to know the volume. The volume of how much? One mole. So we can start plugging in what we know. We know the number of moles. It's one because by definition, that's what molar volume is. I have one mole. I could put as many zeros there as I wanted to. R is 0.08206 liter atmospheres. And I understand you not wanting to write this over and over again, but do it anyway. And the temperature, STP, the standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius or 273.15 Kelvin. And um, P, the pressure at STP is one atmosphere. Okay, so that's a P down there. Now we can put all these numbers into our calculator and we will get the molar volume being 22.4 liters. Another way that we can say this is what is the molar volume of a gas? We write it as 22.4 liters per mole. Just like molar mass is how many grams are in a mole. Molar volume is how many mole liters are in a mole. So what this becomes, if it's at STP, this can become a handy conversion factor between volume of a gas and moles of a gas. You can use it just to convert with dimensional analysis. So it's handy to memorize it. I'm not going to tell you you have to memorize it because you can do any problem with PV equals NRT that you would have used this for. This will just save you a little time and I'll show you how to use it here in a little bit. But like I said, you don't have to necessarily memorize this. I hate memorizing extra things. The only time that I really like memorizing extra things for me is if it saves me time in the long run and that's what this does. I also have seen some students who have come back or have been asking me to help them study for the PCAT um, and I the way it used to work, and I don't know if it still is, is they weren't allowed to use calculators. So they would create problems that you could easily use without a calculator. And the only way that this one would have been easy to use is they used numbers that were multiples of 22.4. So it was easy to divide it into it very uh, quickly. Like if it was 44.8 divided by 22.4, you could easily say that was two. So they used numbers where this memorized piece of information was handy, but it's up to you, okay? So now we have derived the molar volume of a gas at STP. Let's see how we could do this problem. Let's say we had 2.5 moles of a gas and we wanted to know what the volume of that 2.5 moles is. I know that one mole is 22.4. So we start with the given of 2.5. Okay, and that's moles of a gas. And I say, but I don't want moles. I want volume, and I use 22.4 liters in a mole. That's quite a bit of volume for a mole of gas. And then I can multiply that out, and I will get a value of 56 liters. Okay, so I had two significant figures here, so I can only have two significant figures there. So that is how you would be able to use this as a conversion factor. But would you have to? If I said, if I looked at this problem and didn't have this conversion factor in mind and say, how would I solve this? I might say, well, I could just use PV equals NRT. Okay, I'm solving for volume. Okay, so V equals NRT over P. I can plug in what I have been given. I've been given the 2.5 moles, so that would go for here. 
I know my R, I know my T, I know my P, I could put all of that into this equation and that 2 would give me a volume of 60, uh, 56 liters. So you don't have to do this, but solving for it and plugging everything in and using your R um, just takes a little, little extra time, not that much. And Truly, I didn't used to even recommend people memorizing this number um, until I saw that PCAT test. Um, so anyway, this is, saves you time. This you can do with this one piece of memorized equation. All right, it's your turn. Okay, so now I have a problem where we have some oxygen gas and I'm giving you a volume. Okay, I'm giving you the volume of this gas and you're going to figure out how many grams of oxygen gas it is. So pause the video, work through it, then turn it back on and let's see if you got it right. Okay, hopefully you came back after working through it and let's see. The right answer is 20 grams. Okay, so if you got that, you are done with this section and you can stop it. If um, you didn't get it, some common mistakes. Okay, um, the top one is if you use this kind of a relationship and you stopped with moles and you forgot to go on to grams, then you might have got the 0.625 because that's how many moles if you use this conversion factor. Um, if you picked B, maybe you use a molar mass of just O and not thought about, hey, oxygen gas, that's another diatomic molecule, so it's O2 that I have to consider here. So that would have given you the 10 grams, and if you'd done it correctly, of course, you'd got the 20, and I just threw 40 in there because I wanted another choice. All right, so let's, um, if you can look at your work and see, oh yeah, that's all I did wrong, you figured out your mistake and you're never gonna make it again, um, you're also done watching this video. But if you would like me to work through this problem, um, I will do so. I'm gonna change pin colors here. Um, I'll work through it and show you how to do this problem. And I'm going to do it, um, let's see, will I do it both ways? I don't know, let's see. I am given that I have 14 liters, okay? So I'll write my 14 liters, and this is of O2, oxygen gas. It's at STP, so I don't want liters of O2. I want moles of O2. Now, why would I want moles of O2? They're asking for grams. Well, I know that once I know moles, I can get to grams. So the relationship is that there's 22.4 liters in every mole. So there I'm using this as a conversion factor, but flipped over so that the units are in the right place. And then I could say, but I don't want moles of O2. I want grams of O2. And so then I go to the periodic table, I see that oxygen is 16.00, so this is 32.00 grams in a mole, and that will give me the grams of oxygen, which is the 10 there. Okay? It, oops, no, it's not, it's the 20. Boop, boop, boop. If you use 16 here, that's where you'd get the 10 instead. So there is using this as a conversion factor to give you dimensional analysis, but would you have to do that? No, you could have chosen instead to do PV equals NRT and solve for N. So N equals PV over RT, and you can start plugging things in. I'm gonna move it up a little bit here, my pressure Move it up to here. My pressure that I know, it's at STP, so it's one atmosphere. The volume was 14.0 liters. The R, 0.08206. And the temperature, since it's STP, is 273.15 Kelvin. This will get me the moles. And then I can, at that point, move on to get the grams. So we have ourselves the, uh, uh, using PV equals NRT, we can do the same work, but notice this just takes a little bit more writing. It takes a little bit more time to do it this way, but the advantage is you've not memorized a little piece of information. You haven't just memorized this number here. Saves you time if you do. It's another way of working the problem if you do, but there's no reason that you have to. Okay, so this is the third thing that we have learned about using PV equals NRT. That is this idea of molar volume and how to use molar volume to solve problems.